Hi everyone. It's good to be with you again. Happy mid-September. Um, today we are going to talk about a topic that comes up a lot, especially when you're, you're embarking on a spiritual path, and that is darkness and light from a spiritual perspective, of course. So I'm going to start the blog with uh, a quote from an author that probably most of you will remember from years ago. And here it is. If, if you strive only to avoid the darkness or to cling to the light, you cannot live in balance. So try striving to be conscious of all that you are. And that author is Gary Zukov, the author of The Seed of, Seed of Your Soul. So after reading this quote, those of us on an ardent spiritual path may think, well, of course I want to avoid the darkness and always, always live in the light. I mean, isn't that the whole purpose of successfully living a spiritually directed life? Well, the answer for me is a little more complicated than a simple yes or no. Of course, we want our choices, whether our thoughts, our words, or our actions to be made with the intention to bring more love into the world. That is our main purpose for coming here and the pathway that will lead us to the full evolution of our souls. However, this world has its overabundance of darkness that tends to permeate our lives from time to time. And it's hard to avoid it. But the darkness and the light coexist in an endless matrix of ultimate love that cannot be severed. If one of us shuns the light and turns fully to the darkness, at least for a little while, we all suffer the effects of that. We each and every human soul that walks upon the earth all of us have a dual nature. We are both human as well as divine. So we'll always be tempted to kind of cross over to the dark side now and then. And that dark side, again, may be choosing to gossip about a person when we know we shouldn't, or thinking thoughts of hatred toward others, or even wishing harm upon another. It can also be a little bit more overt. So when you actually do take action to hurt a fellow human or even worse, hopefully most of the time we resist the, um, we resist that temptation and the angel of light sitting over here on our shoulder helps us to stay grounded in compassion, forgiveness and love. However, at times, the temptation may be too great for our, our mortal counterpart, the human part, to resist. Our emotions get the best of us and the divine light of our nature kind of falls fully into the background of our lives. We can no longer cling to the light, nor can we avoid the darkness. We fall headfirst into our shadow side, and what usually follows when it's all said and done, is remorse and probably some self-degradation. So does that give us a free pass to go ahead and beat up on ourselves or berate ourselves for being weak or abhor ourselves and perhaps vow to never forgive ourselves? It does not. During those times, we are asked to forgive ourselves just as we are asked to forgive others. It's a huge part of the curriculum in this difficult school that we call the earth plane. We can make restitution for what we've done if we need to, or fully own that moment and take responsibility of the darkness that we brought into our lives and then return to the light. There is no greater reason for our need to accept both parts of our nature, both the light and the darkness. And that's because our individual spiritual evolution is affected by 
the evolution of the one energy, one, that connects us all. As I've said many times, there's really only one of us here because we are connected. So when we embrace that truth, we can understand and feel the compassion and forgiveness for others who have fallen into the darkness, be it individuals or groups of people or even countries. When we are fully conscious and living both as a human being and as our soul, we can be the light in the darkness that will flow through the great matrix of light and help our fellow souls remember who they are. When we shine the love of our infinite soul here on the earth plane, we can light up the world so that perhaps it will start to see that there is a better way for us to live. And that way, of course, is love. Yet if we cling to the light and avoid the darkness, we also avoid the opportunities to make a difference in our presently very troubled and divisive world. When I think about our world, I envision the dances, quote unquote, that we we tend to do during our entire our duration of our lives here on the earth plane. They always seem to be either a beautiful, breathtaking, loving waltz or a rough and tumble tango. Now both, both dances, though they don't really look that way, but both dances are done to express love. But the latter expresses that love with sharp edges and forced movements, and sometimes even violence. So what does this all mean? Well, for me, it means that ultimately we are eternally and infinitely love. And our greatest reason for taking on yet another earthly incarnation is simply to be that love. Somewhere in the recesses of our subconscious mind is that truth, along with our desire to fulfill it. Unfortunately, real divine love can sometimes become corrupted by divisive ideologies, judgment of others, or fear of those who may be different from us. The thing to remember is that we will eventually, we will all eventually grow and evolve into the true essence of who we were created to be, all of us. The earth, the earth school, though, is a tough one, but it pushes us this place. It pushes us harder and faster than any other realm, planet, dimension, or universe. And no one, absolutely no one, gets left behind. It will just take some a little longer to get where we all long to go, back to the loving arms of our supernal creator, God. Of course, we don't ever, ever want to choose the darkness over the light. We know that. Yet the very nature of our existence here is that we are, and you know this, a spiritual being having a mortal experience. And that makes us sometimes vulnerable to do just that. We are all spiritual partners on a common path, however. We need each other during those dark times in our lives. So let's make a commitment to not simply be the light in the darkness, but also look for opportunities to help others remember their place of origin and the DNA that flows through their soul's energy and through the blood in their mortal veins. Helping others rather than judging them helps us all to reach our place of origin sooner. This place where we all long to go, some of us call heaven, nirvana, or the afterlife, this place is not actually a place at all, but a level of consciousness more transcendent and more radiant than anything we can envision here on earth. The rainbow skies breathe endless love. 
the rivers and the oceans of every color and hue flow all through the ethers carrying that love to infinity and beyond. The heart of the mountains and valleys pulse through our souls and can lift us up to go wherever we choose to go. Peace is our nourishment there and contentment our reward. When we reach this miraculous space of ascended consciousness, we will be free then to cling endlessly to the light for the darkness will be no more. So I hope you enjoyed that discussion. And it's just important to remember not to, not to judge ourselves when we do fall into a dark place, because it's just part of the whole reason that we come here to learn how to overcome the um, corporal, you know, temptations, things that bring us out of our purpose, being, being the love that we are. It happens to us. That's what being what being a mortal human is all about. We have both sides of our nature. But always remember this, and we talk about this all the time too, that when we judge others or see something in them that makes us angry and want to hurt them or they do something to us that that is awful and we want to lash out, just remember this that we already talked about is that we cannot see in others that which does not exist within us. So if we see someone and we're judging them for a particular thing that they're doing or saying or being, there's part of that within, within us. So all of those moments are a chance for us to pull back and self-correct, do some really thinking about who we are and the times that we may have done pretty much the same thing and learn how to forgive both the other person and ourselves. That doesn't mean we have to have these people in our lives either, people that are consistently prickly and difficult to get along with, we don't have to. But in our thoughts and in our heart, we send them love and send them on their way if that's what we choose to do. So anyway, I'm getting on too much here, so I'm gonna say goodbye for now. And thank you again for joining me. And I hope to see you again for the next vlog. I don't know what it'll be about, but hopefully it'll be great. So have a terrific week, everyone. Namaste. And thank you. Thank you. I love you all.